Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at a couple of tablets that you can get at Walmart stores here in the United States. These are the On tablets. It's spelled O-N-N. -N. The 10.1 inch version here costs $79 and the 8 inch version costs $64. So pretty reasonably priced and they kind of line up with what you might get from Amazon with their Fire tablets. We're going to take a closer look at these and see what they can and can't do in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for both of these with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what these tablets are all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. What's interesting about these two tablets is that they are functionally the same. They have the same processor. It's a Cortex A53 with a Mali T720 GPU. They both have two gigs of RAM. They both have 16 gigabytes of storage, and they even have the same screen resolution. Uh, this one is 1280 by 800, pretty much a 720p display, and the larger one is two. Uh, typically what we see with the larger tablets and other cheap brands is that the larger one is faster and more capable. Not this time, these are identical from the specification standpoint. Uh, the screen therefore on the smaller tablet here looks a little bit sharper because you are packing more pixels into a smaller size. So if you plan to do web browsing and reading, uh, things might look a little better on the smaller tablet versus the big one. Uh, what Amazon has done with their big tablet is put in a 1080p display that looks a lot better for that particular form factor along with a faster chip. These two things are pretty much the same with two minor differences. Uh, those differences are that on the 8-inch tablet you get a screen protector, which is not on the 10-inch version, but the 10-inch version does have stereo speakers here on the back, which are lacking on the 8-inch version. But otherwise, these two are pretty much the same. So we're going to be demoing things on the larger tablet here for uh, convenience sake and know that what you'll see on the 10-inch is exactly what you'll get out of the 8-inch. Now these are Walmart tablets, and as such, there is some Walmart stuff kind of baked into them. Uh, the biggest thing that you'll notice on them is that on the navigation bar, you're going to have your back button, your home button, and your little multitasker selector button here. And then they've also added a Walmart icon to the bottom of the screen everywhere. And when you click on that, it will give you the option to load up one of the pre-installed Walmart apps that are on the tablet. Uh, they've given you uh, Sam's Club, Walmart eBooks, the regular Walmart app, and Voodoo. Uh, so just be advised that you might accidentally find yourself hitting that button every once in a while and finding those Walmart apps popping up for you. Uh, but there's no other advertisements or anything else that will pop up on screen. But I do think a lot of people are going to hit that button by accident when they're trying to navigate around on their tablet. On the Amazon side, they'll sell you the tablet at a lower price if you're willing to accept advertisements on the lock screen. So there's always a bit of a cost to some of these things in the sense that they're trying to get you to buy more after you buy their cheap tablet. Now there is another version of the 10-inch tablet for sale at Walmart with a keyboard. Uh, that one sells for $99, but it's otherwise the same tablet. I was not able to get that keyboard version, although I would not expect much from it. Typically those keyboards tend to be a little bit cheap, but functional, and I would imagine that is what you would get out of that one. Uh, one thing I like about the 8-inch tablet is that it has a longer warranty than its Amazon equivalent. Uh, so Amazon on their 8-inch tablet offers a 90-day warranty. Walmart's giving you a full year on this cheap tablet, which might be enough for a lot of folks to go with the Walmart tablet, just given that you'll have a little bit more mileage out of the product should something go wrong a little bit into your ownership of it. Uh, they are not that heavy. This one weighs 12.4 ounces or 352 grams. Uh, the larger 10-inch version here is 1 pound 2 ounces or 510 grams. Battery life is not spectacular. You'll probably get about 5 hours or so out of both of them here. Not great, but good enough if you are a casual tablet user and uh, don't have your expectations set all that high. Uh, there are not many ports on these, but each do have a micro SD card slot for augmenting its onboard storage. So you could store movies and music and uh, perhaps a few apps on there if those apps support SD card installation. Uh, you should also be able to use Netflix uh, with this and download videos to that SD card for offline viewing. I think YouTube supports that as well if you're a premium subscriber. Uh, you have a headphone jack here, which is now lacking on a lot of more expensive devices. And then you've got a micro uh, USB connector down here at the bottom for charging. And it should also support USB on the go for attaching devices. 
On this side, you have your power switch and a volume rocker, and you've got two lousy cameras, one on the front here and one on the back. Good enough for getting things done, but I would not expect to take any award-winning photographs with them. Uh, the 10-inch version has pretty much the same layout of ports and buttons. Uh, you've got the power switch and the volume rocker here, uh, the USB port, the SD card slot, and the headphone jack, and that is pretty much it. I was surprised they didn't have pogo plugs on this one for the optional keyboard accessory. Both of these support Wi-Fi, of course, and they also support Bluetooth, so you can connect up wireless headphones and keyboards, mice, joysticks, and that kind of stuff as well. So they are pretty much run-of-the-mill Android tablets that uh, will give you a very basic Android experience for a pretty reasonable price. Now, I found the performance on these tablets to be just fine for the things that most people will do with a tablet. We'll start off with some media watching. We'll go over to YouTube here and pull up a video from my channel. The apps load up pretty quickly, actually, not uh, really lagging at all. And we can pull up a video here from my channel and start playing that back. As you can see, things generally spring to life pretty quickly. We're on my home Wi-Fi here, of course, and we'll skip the ad here and start the video up. Uh, so really no problems here. Uh, having the two gigabytes of RAM really helps because you can do some multitasking and uh, jump out to the main screen and running that YouTube video picture in picture if you want. Uh, so you do have a good amount of flexibility for jumping around and doing different things on the tablet. I did find the display quality on the 8-inch one to be a little bit better. Again, just because you have here the same resolution in two different screen sizes and you'll see a little more pixelization, if you will, on this display given that you are essentially running with larger pixels than you will on the 8-inch version. Uh, both have IPS displays, so they have decent viewing angles to them. Uh, they're not super bright, but bright enough to uh, use for basic tasks here. And again, overall, I found the performance here to be uh, very usable for the price point, which is uh, really great if you're looking for a tablet and don't have a huge budget to spend. Uh, website rendering isn't bad here. We're on nasa.gov, which does have a lot of multimedia elements. The scrolling speed is decent, and jumping around from one page to the other seems to be working pretty well, too. So all in for the basics, I think these are pretty nice little tablets. So let's move on now to gaming. And one of the things you'll discover is that there's a lot of games that will run on these tablets. Again, we've got the 10-inch one out here, but our testing on the 8-inch one uh, is identical in performance. Uh, so this is Goat Simulator. It's one of the games you'll find on the App Store. You'll sometimes get a little bit of slowdown here and there, but generally the experience for the price point, I think, is pretty good. Uh, games like Minecraft should run well on these as well, so don't expect a lot out of it, but you will get a very workable gaming solution here, given that most of the games on the Google Play Store are targeting hardware that performs about where these tablets perform, so you shouldn't find much that doesn't run on these. Let's take a look now at two other things. Now, other casual games will run quite nicely on these devices. This is Pac-Man 256, one of my favorites on the Android platform. All seems to be good here, and again, I don't think you'll have any trouble finding stuff to play. I also thought it might be fun to see how emulators work. We've got RetroArch here running on the 8-inch device with a Bluetooth controller and the PlayStation 1 emulator going here, and it seems like it's running at a pretty decent frame rate. I think PS1 is probably about the best you're going to get out of this uh, so you shouldn't have a problem finding uh, 8 and 16-bit games to play on here, like the Sega Genesis and the uh, Super Nintendo. And again, I think the PlayStation 1 is about the max that these devices can do, and I need some more practice on this game. And on the 3D Mark Slingshot benchmark test, we got a score of 228 on the 8-inch tablet, pretty much the same score, 225 on the 10-inch tablet. And you'll also notice that these are very close in score to the Amazon Fire HD 8, and the Nook tablets we looked at not all that long ago. I wouldn't be surprised if all of these tablets are being made in the same factory and just badged with different brands uh, when they head out the door. Uh, so this really will be the same performance you'll see with other low-cost tablets from other major retailers. So overall, these are not a bad deal for what you're getting. Uh, just don't expect a lot, and I think you'll be quite happy with them. It's great to see that you get uh, Android 9 on these. You've got the Google Play Store and all of the apps that you can find in there, and it looks like they uh, have performance that is good enough to do most of the minor tasks that people might do with their tablets. And if you keep those expectations in check, I think you'll be pretty happy getting a nice little deal on these tablets at your local Walmart. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, 
and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.